Hey everybody, this is Andy with RS Experience. And unless you've been living under a rock these past few weeks, you've undoubtedly heard of the new Porsche 718 Cayman GT4 RS. This is the first RS in the Cayman model lineup. Today, I'm going to share five things I like about the RS and a few that I don't. The question is, has Porsche finally answered the enthusiast's demands? Hey, I'm Andy, a high-performance car enthusiast with a passion for well-engineered automobiles. I love to drive mountain roads with like-minded enthusiasts, along with sharing driving tips and techniques in my Porsche GT3 RS and BMW M2 CS. Let me share with you some of the highlights or stats of the new 718 Cayman GT4 RS. One, and the biggest one, is that it has a four liter naturally aspirated six cylinder engine straight out of the new 992 GT3. Like, woohoo! How exciting is that? The car has 493 horsepower and 331 pound feet of torque and revs to 9,000 RPM. That's the same as the GT3. The horsepower is down about, it's down about 10 horsepower, and that's mainly due to, since this is mid-mounted uh, engine, the exhaust system is a little bit longer, so it kind of messes with the back pressure, and that's what's driving probably about that 10 horsepower difference. This car will do zero to 60 in 3.2 seconds and has a top speed of 196 miles an hour. The car is equipped with a PDK dual clutch transmission, the only option, and it has shorter gear ratios than the GT4 for improved acceleration. The wheels are 20 inch by eight and a half inch front and 20 inch by 11 in the rear. There are the optional lighter uh, magnesium wheels that will set you back $15,640. Front tires are a 245-35 and the rears are a 290-530. And those of you that are familiar will recognize that these are the same size that's on the GT4. The standard brakes are the iron rotors with 408 millimeters up front and 380 at the rear. Uh, you can opt for the Porsche composite ceramic brakes that are 410 millimeters up front, 390 in the rear, and those will set you back about $8,000. There is additional downforce on the GT4 RS, mainly due to a couple components. So there's a, a larger front splitter, there's the air vents on the front fenders to release pressure buildup in the wheel wells that helps to lower the car. There's the new swan neck rear wing, and there's a whole new underbody of the car. The downforce on this car is about 25% greater than the standard Cayman. Uh, the car weighs in at 3,227 pounds, and just for reference, that's 77 pounds more than my GT3 RS. The base price of the new 718 Cayman GT4 RS is $141,700, that's US, plus $1,350 delivery fee. Okay, let's jump into the five things I like about the car. So the first thing, well, who's not gonna say? The engine, right? This has the four liter flat six naturally aspirated straight out of the 992 GT3. I don't care that it has 10 less horsepower. It's the idea that it has that engine. And this is something I think the enthusiasts have been wanting and asking for for quite some time. Two, the second thing I like about it, this, uh, they call it race text now, but it's the Alcantara dash. This is the first time Porsche's ever done this in any of their GT cars. So now, uh, you know, instead of having the plastic dash, uh, you in the Visac you can get a, an Alcantara or Race Tex dash. Obviously, you can also opt for a leather dash if you want as well. 
The third thing I like about the GT4 RS is that they offered the Vysok package, similar that they did on the GT3 RS and the GT2 RS. So what does the Vysok package give me? Well, on the exterior, I get the fully exposed carbon hood. So the front hood of the car is uh, carbon fiber exposed. The mirror caps, so the exterior mirrors are carbon fiber as are the two intakes. There's a new air intake um, that is up at the rear window. So the rear windows have been replaced with an air intake. And the Vysok has a little bit different design of that intake. That's in carbon fiber. And then the carbon fiber exposed rear wing and the 935, the Porsche 935 inspired tips on the tailpipe. There are titanium tips on the tailpipe of the car. So those are some of the exterior. On the interior, we have the uh, carbon fiber exposed, the air intakes that come in from those side windows are carbon fiber, as is the air filter, the air box cover itself with the GT4 um, RS logo on it. We have the Vysok uh, little emblem, I think up on the dash, like along the trim. And we also have the Vysok package embroidery on the headrests of the seats. Oh, there's one more thing. The rear windshield, the windscreen, the rear windscreen has the Porsche written out uh, on the top of it as well. So those are some of the things you get with the Vysok package for $13,250. The fourth thing I like about the GT4 RS, kind of touched on it a minute ago, but that's those side air intakes. So they've replaced, removed the side rear windows on the car and have these air intakes that bring air down into that new flat six engine that's sitting right behind your head as you're sitting in that seat. I can't wait to hear that. Now that side window has two different designs. The non visac package design is more, you know, flat with just a little kind of hole in it where the Vysok has like a scoop. I think it looks like the scoop from the, like that used to be on the rear deck lid of the GT3 has a little bit of a scoop. So a little bit different design in addition to being carbon fiber. The fifth thing I like about the GT4 RS is the swan neck rear wing. So we've seen this on the GT3. We see it in the spy shots of the GT4 RS, right? It's just, it's just better for airflow since the impact of a rear wing is what happens under it, not what happens on top of it. Uh, so having that smoother surface is what they're looking for. Uh, the only thing I'll say here is I think that the design of the Swan Neck on the GT3 is a little bit better than the design on the GT4 RS. So there are a few things I don't like about this car. Uh, and the first one is going to be the suspension. So the suspension on this car, it's it's old technology. Uh, you know, it's six years old, what they're using in the Cayman. The technology is probably, who knows, 20, 30 years old. Uh, so, you know, I think there was only so much, I guess, Porsche could do, right? You know, without changing the body and making huge differences to a car that's, it's, it's probably, um, you know, just wasn't worth it from a cost standpoint. So I'm a little disappointed. The car could have had better handling, could have done a little bit better. And the second thing that I don't like about this car, they didn't do like a staggered wheel setup like they do on the other RSs where they put a 20 on the front and a 21 on the rear. The reason I believe Porsche could do that on the 911 series was that the RS models and the, you know, the GT3 RS, GT2 RS, they used the 911 turbo body. So if you remember in the 991 generation, the, there was like a narrow and a wide body and then the turbo even had a wider body. So with that wider body, it can accommodate those larger, you know, widths of tires and wheels. Where when we go to the Cayman series, there's no such thing as a Cayman Turbo or Cayman Turbo S with a different body. With this car, likely the end of this generation, you know, Porsche wasn't gonna go spend the money to say, oh, we're gonna create a new body to accommodate uh, the wider wheels. This car looks fantastic. And I don't think Porsche is gonna have any problem 
selling every single one that they make. And with a two and a half year claimed production run, hopefully everyone who wants one can get one. Question is, is this a swan song for the Cayman model lineup? Is this the end of the internal combustion engine? I don't know. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Please subscribe to this channel if you are passionate about performance cars, want to better your driving skills, want to learn about new cars from an unbiased reviewer, are interested in car modifications and gear.